So, our trainer for tonight is uh, Jimin. Yeah. <laughs> is to help people and businesses fulfill their full potential. He spent 30 years helping property developers in Southeast Asia to grow and manage their shopping malls. Jimin helped co-found five startups and provided strategic advice, coaching and networks to his business partners. He has also co-authored two books with aspiring writers. Now, Jimin facilitates CEO peer advisory groups and provides one-to-one -one coaching to CEOs so that they can make better decisions for their businesses, their families, and for themselves. Wow. 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 Very good. Yeah. He also helps people monetize their video clips by listing video content from the world onto China's mobile video platforms. Wow. Yeah, wow. wow. Alright. Now for the meat. Time allocated for this session is 40 minutes. So like I said, the three cards will be 30 minutes green, 35 minutes yellow, and then 40 minutes the red card will be out. So everybody clear on what's going to happen? Yes. yes. Alright, so please welcome Jimmy. Okay, good evening to everyone. Uh, my name is Jimmy. Today is session is talking about impromptu speaking. Uh, impromptu speaking is actually for us to uh, think on our feet. Uh, think quickly and say what we can logically. Uh, so today I will share with you one of the uh, methods of structuring your speech. Uh, previous uh, sessions I did one was uh, I have a few methods but I think today I just focus on one. I'll focus on the topic of uh, PREP. But let me talk about what is the objective of this assembly. Firstly I will present the speech structure which uh, I hope that when you present your speeches and topics you can follow the structure. Uh, I will also show you how you use the speech structure with an example and of course you have to apply the example structure. Okay, PREP sounds very easy. First, you just talk about the point. Do you agree with a certain point? Uh, what is the reason? Why do you have this point of view? Let's describe your reason. Give an example and finally restate your point and summarize and wrap up. So simply these four points. So I'll just uh, demonstrate quickly, I won't take too long, uh, so that you can practice it. Okay, let's say I choose a topic. Leaders are born, they cannot be trained. All these uh, topics are meant to be controversial, you can either agree or disagree, doesn't matter. So this is the topic I cho I've chosen. My point is that I agree that leaders are born, they cannot be trained. So what is my justification? Why do I say that? Okay. Uh, leadership is related to your personality. Yeah, I mean, if you don't have the quality and personality to be the leader, so no matter how much training or leadership you get, uh, you won't become a leader because simply you cannot change your personality. Can you? You know, we go through all these leadership training courses. At the end of the day, uh, we can keep on going and going, but we can't be a true leader. You know? And why do I? Why do I say this? Why is my example? Okay, of course. Can anyone play football? No. Most people would like. Can anyone play music or study science? If they are interested, yes. I think the answer is yes. But can anyone be a Messi? Messi is the top footballer in the world. Can anyone be a Mozart? Can anyone be a Einstein? The answer is no. Of course, because Messi, Mozart, Einstein, they are born with the talent. And they are talent to the field, and their talents are shaped through the training. So of course, this is very high standard. Doesn't mean that uh, all leaders are that standard, but uh, this is my point of view. So I gave an example to support my point of view. And, uh, and I summarize the whole thing by saying that, okay, uh, the view that leaders are trained, can be trained, actually it's, uh, uh, the view is propounded by trainers uh, of leadership. <laughs> of course, leaders can be trained, you know, mm -hmm. otherwise how do I get my income? Oh. In the so this is the, from their training school of view. So of course they say leaders can be trained. It's not just born, so they get more revenue. But in my experience, I find that many people go through leadership training year after year, day after day, uh, but doesn't improve their leadership. So uh, I, I've, uh, there was one training in the overseas I attended. I was not uh, attending, I just heard what people attended. Basically, they got the trainer from Taiwan, they spoke in Mandarin, and 
uh, in the sessions, they all like each other, hug each other, not very emotional, no? <coughs> like each other. But at the end of the day, three days later, they will start, they will back and stabbing each other. No? Mm -hmm. So, is it effective in the developing leadership? Maybe not. But it's definitely good for the trainer, it makes quite good money. <laughs> so, uh, so, my point of view is that leaders are born. No amount of training will make a person a good leader unless he or she is already one. Of course, you can agree or disagree. Doesn't matter. That's where you can disagree with them. Point of view. So this is the, the sequence, the format. You talk about your point, give your reason why you have that point, example, and summarize your point. So today I have uh, divided the, the topics. There are 15 topics actually, but I don't think I need to run through all 15. But I group into three three categories. Okay. Uh, this is uh, actually what we want to know, but. Uh, I will just jump straight to the categories. Okay, before we go there, we talk about the timing. Uh, timing is three minutes. Three minutes, okay. One minute will be your yellow, uh, sorry, your green light. Does it appear green here? Green, Okay, green. Two minutes is a yellow. And the three minutes will be the red light. So, you are given 30 seconds to wrap up. So, at 30 seconds, the frog will sound. Where's the, the sound of the frog? So anyway, you have uh, three and a half minutes to three and a half minutes is a hard stop. Eh? Three minutes is a soft stop. I would say that means you are supposed to wrap up. Really. Soft stop. But you are given thirty seconds to wrap up. So three thirty three minutes thirty seconds means really hard stop. If you don't stop, you will start clapping and make noise. <laughs> what is the minimum? Time you need to speak. Minimum is one minute. Right? Minimum one minute. Yeah, one minute. minute. Uh, if you want to speak less than that, one minute you are safe already. Yeah. Of course, there are cases where, let's say, we have uh, uh, a bit nervous, people stand up, maybe thirty seconds. But it's okay. Yes. One minute is just trying to learn. So there's no pass here. No worry. Whether you speak one minute, four minutes, just uh, try to learn how to keep it in the time. <laughs> so let's uh, go on to the topic section. Uh, I divided into three categories. I'll just run through quickly first, three groups. One group is everything free. <laughs> Second group is living life. Third group is buy and sell. But let me go through, uh, you can choose either of the groups. You know, I try to group it together. Actually, the topics are all over the place. But I've grouped it together to see whether it makes some sense. You know, to make it more interesting. So we talk about the first thing, everything free. You know? <laughs> Well, education, surgery, hospitalization should be free. Education should be free. If you want to succeed, don't go to school. Of course, free now. I've got money to go to school. No? The most important things are other than kindergarten. So you can get the drift. Huh? When you talk about free, you can, you can see all the consequences. Huh? So I need a volunteer to speak on the first topic. Education, surgery, and hospitalization should be free. Any, any takers? How about Charles? Mm. You have been advocating for me. By my voice, you may tell I'm from England. <laughs> and England has had for a long time, which my father always said was the best thing, a thing called the National Health Service. And that means that everything, until my dad was 90, my mum was 80 when she died, they had free everything, all operations, all cataracts, everything, everything. And yet they were quite well off. They didn't have to pay for any of their, their medication and treatment. Mm. And to me, this is a sign of the level of civilizedness in society. So I'd like to suggest to you that uh, Singapore tends to say, pay for everything, a little bit at least. And that's an interesting principle because the National Health Service is actually in terrible financial troubles, <laughs> and the delays can be enormous, but I like the theory, the idea that all your medical bills should not be a worry for your brain, and that's what uh, Singapore, having a very large sovereign wealth fund, should arrange for all Singaporeans. PR should have to pay for everything. Thank you very much. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, uh, Mr. President. By this topic, it is implied that most of the important things in life are learned through observation, in our families, with friends, and so on and so forth. There is an element of truth in it, but I do not totally agree because it all much depends on our parents, whether they are able to coach us in the ABCs and the one, two, threes. I have had parents who were illiterate, not educated, in any of the schools, because um, I'm rather also you would rather you would know that most of them didn't have schools at that time. And when I was sent to school, uh, which is a fairly good school, the Singapore Chinese Girls School, wow. I wow. had a problem of numbers. I could cope with English, I couldn't cope with Chinese, and I was absolutely terrible in maths. Now but because I've gone to school, I think the school has taught me to analyze and evaluate and I'm able to work on my strength, which is language, ability to relate with people, and of course coming to Toastmasters and the Agora. So coming to this topic of don't go to school, I cannot agree with that. But I would like that to say that learning from school alone is not sufficient. We need to learn from people around us through observation, to come into places like that, to walk in the nature, to travel, and a host of other things that add to our lives. So therefore, this my, my suggestion is that Go to school and yet learn from the school of life. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Who want it to be free? What? Education what? should be free. Education. Uh, <laughs> higher education. Please, <laughs> lower. I just ask you to raise your hand. I want to tell you the truth. Nothing is ever free. <laughs> but indeed, we did have this economy, and someone wrote a book, Free, Perfect, and Now. And do you have to pay for a Gmail? Free. Do you pay for a WhatsApp? Free. Facebook? Free. Do not be deceived. Are they making money? Yes. They are big company. So it might be free for you, but someone has to pay for it. So always keep in mind, don't take anything free. <laughs> then you'll be like a fish just taking a worm and then get caught. Understand something deeper. If anything that are just free, maybe you don't value. You don't care. There must be some input. Maybe it's free for you. You ask your father pay for it to make sure you can choose a rich father or a rich uncle. You don't choose. You don't choose fathers. <laughs> oh no. Good, yeah, awake. <laughs> of course you can't choose father. No, that's the point. So it's important to look behind it. Because ideally, okay, free is good. And they did it very smartly. Very smart because all this was about free. But you must see at the end where they make money. And they were brilliant. They created that. They didn't even have to go public. Facebook for it for 1.9 billion. Yeah. So, for education wise, sometimes, I mean, for ministers, say every school is a good school. No! There's a better school. Like Singapore Chinese Girls School. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Good evening, everybody. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Casey. <coughs> I would like to present on this point the most important things I learned at kindergarten. I have a seven-year-old daughter. Um, two years ago, a few years ago, I was choosing a kindergarten for her. And I went to this very posh kindergarten. And um, they were talking about, wow, you know, the parents are preparing, they'll bring their kids there to learn. You have mathematics, you have Chinese, deep Chinese, you have a lot of assessments to bring home and stuff. Then I asked a question, how about art? Then they said to me, they say, oh yes, we have one day we call it a messy day we do art. <laughs> then I was staring at her and I said, excuse me, you call my career a messy day. I'm an artist. You know? And it was like, oh no, 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 no. Then I said, do you give your children a childhood? <laughs> my point is here. Now, the most important things I've learned at the kindergarten, kindergarten are not the things of academic. What I want to point is, are they having a stable childhood? To love, to trust, to hug, you know, to love, to, 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 to climb up again, to, to stand up again when they fall down, you know. These are the kind of things that they should learn, okay. So what they shouldn't is, it's like, my next point is, how will I teach? If I'm in the uh, if I if I write a curriculum for kindergarten, I'll teach them back to what I just said: love, how to love, how to have, how to make mistakes, and uh, art should not be a messy <laughs> day. <laughs> art should not be a messy day because when I realize that, where does it start? My point is my final point is where does it start? The educations. All kindergarten do not start in school. It starts at home. Yes. It's the parents. Support. Yeah. So for me, I gave my child the childhood that I was given by my parents. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Hi. Hello. Hi, Lawrence. Hi. Hi, Rehana. Hi, Rehana. I was invited by Lawrence. Oh, wow. <laughs> and uh, all men. So, is it men or women? Up to you. Up to you. Up to you. All men are created equal. Something to ponder about, something to think about. All men are created equal. Yes, in terms of uh, how they look. I mean, we all look mm -hmm. standard, head. Body, we all look, so we are created equal in something. But I believe there's something more and deeper in each one of us. Something of intrinsic value. And it is your talent, your gift that you have to the world. And that is not equal. Everybody has their own special gift, has own special abilities that they can share with the world and they can give to the world because I believe that everyone was created for a purpose. And everyone was created with a, with a grand plan in mind that we are here to serve a higher purpose, to serve each and every one of us in our own special way. So some may be gifted in the arts, some may be gifted in music, some may be gifted in just being a good friend, some may be gifted in various other aspects of life. So I believe all men are not created equal in that sense. They have been given a unique gift. But each gift is special and unique and it brightens up the world. But the problem is each of us, some of us have difficulty finding that gift. Some of us go through life never finding that gift. And it's quite sad. So we have to Go out there in the world and see what we can do. And eventually you will find your gift. Because you were designed by a higher power wow. to fill a purpose in this world. Thank you. Wow. We should abolish retirement. Wow. 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 President, ladies and gentlemen, I totally disagree. Oh. <laughs> abolish retirement. Okay. Why, why is that so? Because if we abolish retirement, the opposition for five reasons to attack the government. Oh, you want us to work until we die, we can't take our CPF money, so far and so forth. So we should not 
abolish retirement. But however, in my own view, in our own life, uh, our, our active, uh, if we want to have an active living, we should keep on working and keep on uh, working and be active in our own activities. So, in my own, personally, we should not retire. We should keep on working. Uh, so, this, it should not be a liability to the society. We should contribute our knowledge, serve the uh, society. So, we are not a burden in our uh, society. Mm. Therefore, I've, in my own way, I think that we should not retire personally, but officially, there must be a retirement age. This is to make everybody happy, the opposition party will be happy, we are happy, but never retire. Must keep on learning and learning and learning, then you will never grow old. Wow. Thank you. When I look at this topic, it may made me think of my childhood. Growing up in Chinese culture, it was really tough. When I was little, I started playing piano. When I made one arrow, my parents told me, okay, you really suck. <laughs> you know, if you keep doing that, you cannot become a pianist one day. And when I went to school, and I worked really hard day and night, a lot of homework, and when I only got 99 out of 100 mark at the exam, my parents told me, oh, that's not good. You really need to work hard. Wow. So, really, I always feel like I was terrible, and I couldn't really live up to my parents' expectation, and I'm not good enough. And one day, I got a chance to go to France for my studies, and on my own. And at the time, I took some French courses before I went there, but that only was conversational French. And I couldn't really learn anything, I mean, understand anything at the university at the college. So I worked really, really hard and competed with all the French students. And finally, after a year, I became first in class. Wow. And later on, I got the opportunity to go to Canada um, for an exchange program. And just after a few years, then I decided to move to Toronto, an English-speaking catch city. And at the time, I couldn't speak one word of English. So I only, you know, uh, speak Chinese and French. Then I had to find a job in Toronto, but also, I mean, learn English very quickly. So a lot of people told me, like, it's impossible, you couldn't do that. And then I just spent three months, and I was in my spare time, to study English and also apply for a job at IBM, one of the most world-known companies in the world. And I finally got a job. <coughs> so all of that, when I remember my past and everything I've been through, and I said, okay, it's, you are good enough and you can do all that things. You just have to give a try, give yourself a chance. So today I also took the courage to be in front of the audience and yeah. also yeah. I just want to tell everybody because in our culture parents always say you are not good enough and then you can do this, you can do that but you just have to tell yourself you are good enough and the world needs that very special gift that only you have. Thank you.